G'day everyone, welcome to Lubrication Explained. In this video, we're going to talk about the performance differences between standard mineral oil lubricants and polyalpha olefin synthetic lubricants. So as you're probably aware, there are two main classes of lubricants. You've got the mineral oils, which are derived from crude oils, and they comprise group 1, 2, and 3 in the API classifications. And then you've got synthetics, which fall under generally group 4 and group 5, um, of which the main category is polyalpha olefins, also known as PAOs. So these comprise the majority of um, the industrial as well as vehicle lubricants. And so it's a really important one to understand. So when we look at the... Uh, base or raw material for a mineral oil it's this i've described it as a soup of different molecules you've got paraffins isoparaffins uh, naphthenics you've got aromatic rings so they're, they're those benzene rings um, it, it really is um, if you like a natural product there's variability in it um, there's variability in crude oils when you go to different places around the world. And refining is the exercise in um, selecting only the molecules with the properties that you desire. With synthetics, the raw base material that goes into manufacturing them is very regular. So I'm showing here desine, which is a, a molecule with a single uh, double bond, but uh, a chain of 10 carbon atoms surrounded by hydrogen and that feedstock is very regular and very controlled so it's a little bit like making plastics for example you're probably familiar with the idea that uh, you know polyethylenes are synthesized from ethylene gas so synthetic lubricants are exactly the same within the mineral oils so they're the ones that are derived from crude oils, we can think of them as existing on a triangle of, of three different axes. So you've got paraffins, aromatics, and naphthenes. And as we refine them, we are starting to move from group one, which has some aromatic content or aromaticity, as well as naphthenic content. And we're starting to move up the chain as we refine them further to a product which is predominantly paraffinic. Now, the advantage of group four or the polyalpha olefins is that they are pretty much exclusively paraffins. So they've got those really desirable properties. And the reason why mineral oils never get to this stage, it's not because we're limited by technology. It's actually commercial limitations. In order to make a crude oil look like and perform like a polyalpha olefin, it would just cost way too much. It would be cost prohibitive. And that's why we have synthetic lubricants. Now, if you were to compare um, performance characteristics, right? When I went through and talked about mineral base oil manufacturing, each of the different processes involved in making, in this case, a group one base oil, imparts different properties. And we can look at these and compare to a synthetic PAO to see why it's not necessary in the synthetic case. So for example, the first one is vacuum distillation, and that impl in, um, gives us the properties of viscosity, flashpoint, and volatility. So vacuum distillation is us selecting the molecular weights that we want out of the crude feedstock. Well, with synthetics, what we can do to increase the molecular weight of the final product is we just let the reaction go on longer and we add more uh, desine molecules to the chain. Right, so that's how we can get to a higher molecular weight. So we don't need the vacuum distillation process. Solvent extraction takes out the aromatic components and improves the oxidation stability of the product. But with PAOs, there is no aromatic content. So we don't need that stage either. We don't need solvent de-waxing, which improves our pore point and uh, cold crank, because there are no waxy molecules in the feedstock. So there is no waxy molecule uh, within our desine feedstock. And hydrofinishing is the process of basically cracking um, the weaker double uh, carbon double bonds, as well as removing 
uh, nitrogen and sulfur compounds. Well, again, we don't have these in the raw feedstock for a polyalpha olefin. Uh, now, remember, um, this is for a group one. So for a, a group two or group three, we would replace that hydro finishing with hydro cracking, right? Which is effectively doing the same thing, removing nitrogen and sulfur compounds, breaking double bonds, breaking open um, uh, naphthenic rings as well. And again, we don't need that with the manufacturing of a PAO. So if we looked at the benefits, um, I'll go through a couple of these. First of all, what you're going to find out of a PAO is higher, a higher viscosity index and better shear stability. So what do I kind of mean by that? Well, in a previous video, we talked about the viscosity index and it being a proxy for the way that an oil's viscosity varies with temperature. So if we were to, for example, take just the 68 weight uh, lubricant, what a synthetic PAO might look like on this chart would be like this. So the, the variation with temperature would be less. Note that at 40 degrees, the viscosities are the same because if I wanted to make a 68 weight, it's measured at 40 degrees Celsius. Now, why does this improve the shear stability? Well, it's got nothing to do with the inherent properties of the base oil. Um, you know, shear stability isn't really a function of the base oil. It's more the fact that if I wanted to achieve a higher VI with a mineral oil, I would need to add in viscosity improver additives. And these additives are long chain polymers, which generally under high shear um, can break, right? And that's what, um, uh, that's what reduces your shear stability. In a synthetic PAO, uh, lubricant, we don't need those viscosity modifiers, and therefore it is inherently um, a more shear stable finished product. We also have lower volatility and a higher flash point. So again, these two go together. And the way that you can kind of think of this is, if I would um, look at a distribution of molecular weights, so if I were to look at all the different molecules within a finished product, we might, and this is indicative, this is not true numbers, we would say that a group one might look like this, a group two is a little bit narrower, a group three is narrower still, and a synthetic PAO is the most regular. So what do I mean by that? Well, um, because with a crude oil, we begin with a whole soup of different molecules of different, of different types, but also different sizes, we tend to get a distribution. We might have um, a number of uh, paraffinic molecules of, you know, let's say uh, 10 carbons in length, and we have a number with, let's say, 40 carbons, but they're generally around that sort of 25 carbon range. Um, so there's going to be a distribution. Well, because of the PAO manufacturing process, we can get a lot more, uh, we can get that dialed in a lot more. So uh, all the molecules are basically the same size. Now, what that means for volatility in a flash point is that you have, let's say, for example, in this box, far fewer molecules that are at uh, those low C numbers. So, um, like, low carbon numbers would be, like, methane, for example, and he has one carbon. Um, so, all the gases, which are more likely to, if you like, evapor evaporate off, that means that you get lower volatility but you also get a higher flash point, right? So if you have less volatilization, um, then it's uh, able to uh, combust less re readily. The flip side of that is you also get a lower pour point because you have fewer high molecular weight uh, molecules within your finished lubricant. And that means that you have far less waxy products, um, which, which raise the pour point. So you get better cold temperature performance. Finally, you also get better oxidation stability. So when you look at the finished product of a PAO, there's very few uh, double carbon bonds. There are no nitrogen or sulfur compounds. There are no aromatic rings. So it inherently has really good oxidation stability and it's a very strong backbone. And um, one of the other things that I haven't really talked about is you also get better traction uh, coefficient. So um, I talked a bit, a bit about this in the uh, gear oil efficiency video, which I'll link. 
Um, but that effectively means that because all the, the molecules are of the same size, um, the internal friction of that, of that uh, molecule is less. Okay, so the only real downside is that you get lower solubility. Um, with the mineral oils, particularly with group 1s, the fact that there are some uh, polar molecules within the bulk oil uh, means that it, it is there is some solubility to it. Uh, PAOs are very non-polar, and that can be a challenge for formulators because most additives um, uh, don't uh, mix in very well with a PAO. And so often you'll need a Kobe stock like a, an ester included in the formulation to actually um, hold those additives in solution. So I hope that's given you a bit of a, a, a background for what the main differences are between a mineral oil as well as a synthetic. I hope this has been really helpful. Um, again, if you have questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. This has been Lubrication Explained.